It's the first time trying this button. Let's see what this button does. Oh, I missed my drum beat. Dang it. <laughs> I try to do the drum beat every time, but I missed it. Welcome to the Maker Lounge podcast, where we have a rotating group of makers hanging out and talking craft to each other. Thanks for hanging out with us in the lounge. I hope you've been enjoying the podcast so far. If you haven't heard, we have a new Patreon subscription where you can listen to the episodes early, uh, ac access exclusive content, and get free swag. Uh, thank you to our top tier patrons, Jimmy McAnally and Artigiano Sirio. Gosh, I thought I was going to get that right. It's Artigiano Sirio, I think. Uh, but thank you to those top tier patrons, as well as Steve Mosley for being a mid-level uh, patron. Get in on the action by heading over to patreon.com slash podcast so you can get in on the fun early. How's that sound? Today I've got a guest awesome. host. Yeah. Today I've got a guest host with me, Trey, from Handcrafted by Trey. You may remember Trey from the first few episodes on the podcast. I asked him to join me because not only has he kept his lasers and CNC busy, he also dabbles in 3D printing. Which brings me to our guest for today. I'm talking about the man who puts the big D in 3D. <laughs> Mr. 3D <laughs> Dave himself is joining us and talking about 3D printing. <laughs> Hello, thanks for having me. I'm like, which D is it? <laughs> which D are we talking about? It's the big D. Yeah. I, I almost put little D, but I thought that would be offensive. And you would, you know, you would instantly I... tune us out. <laughs> That's actually a really like good question. So when you spell 3D, is it a little D or a big D? Uh, it's oh, it, Everything is, is uh, uppercase. So okay. it's it's big. So, so you are because the, it's it, each one is like how big is it? An abbreviation, <laughs> um, twelve. Is that a number? <laughs> Your printer goes to a, twelve. A recognizable <laughs> form of measurement. Yeah, twelve. I think you're yeah, compensating. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> it goes to twenty four. Um, actually, oh, I forgot. You do metric system. I think he's blushing, but I'm not sure. <laughs> oh. Ouch. 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 That hurts me for him. Uh, well, oh, maybe we'll actually get to these introductions. <laughs> so, Trey, thanks for... Thanks Imperial for metric jokes. <laughs> they never stop. Uh, Trey, thanks for coming back on and co-hosting with me. Um, I had a great time with you on the, the first couple episodes of the podcast, um, and so I thought it'd be great because you do the 3D printing type of stuff um, to, you know, you may have a lot of good questions that, that I can't think of because I only 3D print when I absolutely have to. So um, so thanks for joining joining me. Oh, heck yeah. I'm happy to be here because I've learned a lot from Dave, so uh, yeah. I'd, I'd be happy to throw more questions at him. <laughs> yeah. So Trey is at Handcrafted by Trey, and I'll put all the the notes for where they can find everybody, find you guys uh, in the show notes. Um, and then Dave, the big D, the three D, <laughs> and three uh, three that's is it. not that's a, a me. measurement. Yeah. <laughs> three is just you know <laughs> third dimensional. <laughs> so uh, hey. Dave. Thank yeah. you for coming on. Uh, I, you were actually supposed to be in the first few episodes, but you right. you came down with the sickness, and yep. So we missed out on having. Yeah, I was. You. It, I, was uh, I, I was really bummed because I, I I had you guys move because I you originally scheduled it, and I was going to be in Chicago, so I couldn't be on that first day. And I was like, oh, when I come back, so I made you guys reschedule it. And I felt terrible, and then like, and then. On the rescheduled date, the day before, I was like, <laughs> I have COVID and I sound terrible and I'm going to be coughing the entire show. Like, I even wanted to do it still. Yeah. But I was just like, I, I can't, I could barely talk because of yeah. all like the coughing. So, no, it worked I'm happy out well. to be on it now. Well, you know, there, <clears throat> but that looked like a, that looked like a fun trip with Luke and, and all yeah. the filmmakers. That, that definitely looked like a good time. 
it was yeah. great. And also, uh, I, I was there for, um, I didn't realize, uh, I wasn't planning on it, but there was a, uh, a digital fabrication convention happening in downtown Chicago at that exact same time. Oh, wow. And, uh, and then I was invited to it by, um, the 3d scanning company that I was working with the last year, they were like, if you're going to be in Chicago, come by. I'm like, I am going to be in Chicago. So I got a free ticket to go for it. And I was able to like, see the whole place. It was really cool uh, because it has like 3d printers and stuff. So it was just like, it worked out perfectly uh, that weekend. So uh, it was, yeah, it was a ton of fun. And then Very Luke cool. is amazing. Uh, he, he had me in his house the whole time. He looks like a blast. And, uh, gave me COVID. So <laughs> oh, he's yeah. to blame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we we think we think it, it is, yeah. but I don't know. That's it, what it happens when you spoon. I mean, you know, you're just in close proximity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. We, yeah, yeah. We we were, you know, you know, making out and stuff. So it just happens. <laughs> Save this for the after yeah. show. Uh, yeah. I mean, had you been on the first few episodes, we wouldn't have been able to talk about maybe one of the things that I want to uh, eventually get to, which is the Jimmy build and that type of thing. So. Mm. It actually worked out. We had um, Pete from um, uh, Pete Squared on, and he filled in for your on your in your place, and uh, so we had a great great time because he had that product that he just launched the the Lego sorter and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it all worked out. Um, but we're here now, and uh, I think we're gonna have a, a great a great conversation. So. Basically, give us the the rundown. How did you get started in like three D printing? Like when you know your elevator pitch, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, so uh, I guess it's been like five years ago. I was uh, in kind of a rut, and I was living in New York City. I had a tiny New York City apartment, like you know, quintessential, like you know, just a yeah. shoebox of an apartment. And I, I wanted to, you know, start making stuff. And um, I just had a kid and we were um, uh, just at home constantly. And I was just kind of being in a creative funk. And I just wanted to start making something tangible. And at the time, 3D printing was starting to kind of blow up Yeah, five years ago. I mean, it was already kind of existing. But this is when like Kickstarter started to have like tons of printers and stuff. And I had invested in one and it kind of failed. And I was mm. like, um, like, I still want a printer. Let me do some research, went on Reddit and learned about it. And, and then I got into buying my first printer and then I was able to keep that printer at my work. And eventually I bought another one and kept it in my apartment, in my closet. And I was just making stuff, you know, just doing what everyone does when they first get a printer, which is like go on Thingiverse and uh, download a pre-made right. design and print it. And it looked, uh, it was fun. You know, it was like, mm -hmm. you know, growing up as a kid, it was like, I watch sci-fi and you, you think about Star Trek and they had like this little fabrication machine that, you know, yeah. they put in whatever they want and they, and it makes something. So it was just like, that was the future for me. So it was just like, you know, I was, I was learning, you know, just jumping straight into it and just learning everything about 3D printing. And eventually, you know, you just kind of learn more and more and then all the things that you want to print they don't have and then you start learning to design stuff and mm -hmm. and you start you know think of practical things that you can make um that isn't a product out there for you know right. if there's a product maybe it's too expensive and you don't want to buy it and maybe you could design it it's so simple and there's certain things that just work perfectly for 3d printing yeah uh, and you could just do it at home and, and that's just kind of how i got into it and then eventually um, I wanted to make things that are bigger and, and you're, uh, limited to the dimensions of your print bed. So you can't really print anything bigger unless you print it in parts. So mm -hmm. then I started looking into, um, like maker spaces and trying to go to those places to try to do like woodworking and stuff like that. But at the same time, you know, it was like my wife and I decided like, you know what, we should probably, um, think about buying a house and move out to long Island and get like a bigger place and stuff. And, and that's when I was like, okay find a place with a garage, maybe turn it to a wood shop or a maker right. you know, spot and then I can start building stuff. And that, that's kind of when I started to like share on Instagram and, and, and uh, instead of like being part of the 3d printing community, I, I, I found more of like my like community in the woodworking community, right. you know, like it, it's funny because it's just, you know, I do a lot of 3d printing, but so much of it, of, of the content and everything is driven by the woodworking community and not the 3d printing community. When I feel like you're actually the the 3D printer in the woodworking community, like you, you're the 3D guy in the woodworking community. If you were in the wood, if you were in the 3D yeah. community, you would just be one of a thousand or a million. 
Right, probably, yeah. I mean, there, there's not too many people in there do woodworking, but but so many people in like the like the three D printing community like don't really want to get into woodworking, yeah. right? Whereas when I'm like in the woodworking community, I'm I feel the need to be like the person to be the ambassador to three D printing. Like you guys should get a three D printer. It makes sense for woodworking, right? And here's why, you know, yeah. So like, there's so much to it though. And I, and I think with us, I hate using the term DIY, but we are, so we have that knowledge or that kind of that base where we want to explore more, mm-hmm. but most people or friends that I know that buy a 3d printer, they have no clue of anything else. Like that's just all they want. They want to put it on a counter and just work with that instead of moving and exploring like, yeah. you know, I I started off woodworking and then like all of a sudden I wanted to build a Pac-Man. So now I have to learn electronics yeah, and like some coding and like just that kind of stuff. So, um, I, you know, I think, I think that's true. And I think that's kind of where I'm hoping. And I think a lot of people are hoping the future of 3d printing is right. Like, right. like this would be like in the future, every family everywhere has a 3d printer in the corner of their house. And it's like an appliance, right? right. And it's just like, well, something broke and they just go to it. They type a couple of things and they print it and they come back and they have the thing that broke and they, and they have it right. Yeah. Like people don't want to be part of that back end of designing it, but it's just, you know, this is a future kind of, tech that everyone can use and i won't be satisfied until we can actually 3d print a hamburger and eat it so you know (laughs) (laughs) i feel like we're we're like in the space age already but you know we can't print food you're you're going back to the nickelodeon days (laughs) where like they had those (laughs) (laughs) or smell-o-vision if you remember that like (laughs) yeah i always think of uh back to the future with the pizza hut Oh, and yeah. they had like the tiny pizza and they put it in and it turns into like the really big one. Right. It's just like yeah. some kind of appliance that does something incredible like that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So has your wife uh, said, okay, like you've reached your maximum amount of printers or like, how does that, how does that conversation work well, out? So, yeah. Uh, I, luckily for me, I have like my domain. And as long as uh, everything fits within my domain, it's like no questions asked. You know, it's okay. But but I'm like at my absolute max here. Like there's yeah. really no more I could throw down here. Um, my Recently, I, I, uh, I moved my actual day job office. I closed it down mm. and then moved all everything down to the basement because just nobody wants to go into the office. Right. So like any space I did have – now is like taken up by like huge uh 2D printers. Yeah. <laughs> Not 3D printers, like actually like print, print printers. Oh yeah, yeah. Um but yeah. But but yeah, like I would I would love to uh get a bigger house. So have you been <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that that would help. So have you had like printers out on the dining table, like just printing and like <laughs> it looks like a warehouse in there? No, no, no. Every every everything has a spot right now. And okay. it, and if it um it will get to a point where things will start to get a little crazier and I can move things into the garage. If the weather is nice, I can, I can, I have printed things in the garage. Like I put it on my workbench and it's printing in there just because, uh, like I have like resin printers and they oh, can right. get kind of stinky. So I'll, I'll, if the weather's nice and the temperature's okay, I'll put, I'll bring it upstairs into my garage and actually print it out in there. Um, but yeah, I, right now I'm maxed. Yeah, you sold a bunch of printers too, didn't you? Uh, yeah, well, or at least a few. I remember load, you yeah. know, loading one in the back of somebody's car. Another maker. Oh yeah, yeah. I know. I did give. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gave away one to um, Adrian Hickory Homestead. Um, I okay. Gave, okay. Uh, that one was uh, a printer that was given to me by a sponsor, uh, and it was like test it out, see what you do, uh, what you think. It's a really, it was a, a really good printer, but it was for me. It was just like I don't really use it that often, right? So I. I I just like I could give it to somebody, another maker who can who can utilize it. Uh, I mean, for me, it's you know I'm not doing production stuff, so I don't need a farm. Yeah. Um, if I have a big project that that has a lot of stuff, um, I have at least like three FDM one two. I'm losing count. Uh, three, four. I have four FDM. You have enough that, if you, you lost know, count. Get the job done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, for, for me. Explain FDM because I, I don't know that acronym or what. Oh, that uh, f- f- it's like filament something deposition. I don't know. I, I, I you know, I'm not even trying. They're to guess FDM, it. but it's so filament-based printing. It's, it's, <laughs> it's filament-based so printing. Of- 
okay, it's, okay, it's, okay. it's it's yeah it's the it's the spool of plastic string that gets put in through a hot nozzle that gets melted into kind of a liquid line that gets cooled down and then uh, layered uh, line by line until you get a structure yeah so actually that that leads into a question that we had when we did our little pre we did our pre live or our live session before the show and so and i'm not sure how to pronounce this yar yargamary yar yargamary i don't i'm not sure um but they asked what? do you prefer filament or resin oh, no. resin printing and why yeah. Um so I think uh both have its separate um like strengths and negatives, uh literally too. And um like resin printing is really great for fine detail. So think about like miniatures like people or like um models of like like tigers with fur, like with lots D &D of like little characters. lines and things. D and D characters, yeah. yeah, like that is perfect for resin printing because the printers actually aren't that large, so the things that you print on it are, are, are pretty small. Mm. So it's perfect for that. Whereas FDM is like um, better for mechanical pieces and larger pieces. Um, it, it's definitely got a more wide variety of materials you can use. Um, by that I mean, you know, every, all of all the materials are pretty much plastic, but there's different uh, types of plastic and different types of plastic infused with other particulates like uh, metal or even wood, uh, glow in the dark material and stuff like that. Resin is more limited. Uh, you, you basically are limited to like different types of resin and they, they have slightly tweaked different properties, right. but for the most part, they're all kind of very similar. And is it resin printing the one where you have to put it in like a chemical bath and all that kind of stuff? You, or yeah, the, 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 the post-processing is, is pretty intense. Uh, all, everything about resin printing is toxic oh. because the resin itself, you have to wear gloves. You should be wearing a respirator. Uh, you should, you should not get, you know, any of that on your skin. So like when you're done printing with it, um, you don't want to spill anything mm -hmm. and accidents do happen. And it's just a, it's like a huge mess and headache to clean it. But right. like the prints need to be washed in isopropyl alcohol and then it needs to be put into a UV chamber to cure it, to make it harder, or you put it outside in sunlight too, mm. right? But uh, sometimes I'm in the Northeast and if it's cold outside or the sun's not out, you can't really judge like how much UV light is hitting it. You don't know exactly how long to keep it out there. So it's like, I have like actual little thing that spins with UV lights turned on. So you can kind of like dial in how long it needs to cure. So it, it like, those are all like additional equipment and a lot of things that, uh, you you don't need, but you should have, and it kind of brings the uh, the cost of resin printing up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So hopefully your wife doesn't listen to this, and um, I'm going to ask you a question. <laughs> okay. How much she won't. <laughs> how much money do you think you've spent in 3D printing? Oof. Uh, okay. First, I will say, uh, I, I mean, oh, ooh, this is hard. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll first start by saying that all my printers have paid for itself. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Like they, they, when I went, when I've gotten it, I was able to easily pay for itself off right. filament uh, and, and everything. So the, the money that I had to put down initially, I would probably say at least seven to $8,000. Yeah. Which isn't that doesn't a sound ton. yeah that I don't think that, so. that doesn't sound unreasonable and I, I imagine that you've got sponsorships yeah. and things like that that have helped supplement you know some of the the prints and products and th you know things like that. Oh wait, the the, the number is going up in my head though as as, <laughs> as I said it I'm like wait that can't be right. Let's yeah. say south of ten thousand dollars because okay. I have one printer that is like six thousand dollars so mm. uh so let, let's uh, yeah. But the other printers aren't that expensive. They're like 800 bucks, And I have two of those. And then I have some. Yeah. So I would say under 10 Okay. But I've definitely made enough to pay for it all off. So let's say sure. somebody's just... And this is across a wide <coughs> variety of printers. I mean, it's... I, yeah. I don't want people to think that this is just, you know, yes, you have the one. But right. Right. you can also still buy a $300 printer, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, the Ender... Uh, Three V twos, they're impressive machines. Yeah, for, that's what know, I've got. I think yeah. two seventy right now. Yeah. I mean the the budget one that I so I used to recommend the Creality Ender three as like the budget printer for people, but the one that I've been uh, recommending as of late is the Anycubic Cobra Go. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. It's like it goes for two hundred bucks. Um, uh, sometimes it goes on sale for like one eighty, and it just came out. And it basically has auto bed leveling, which is easy for beginners. It has a uh, build plate that you could take off. Uh, and the same specs on a Creality printer is around four hundred dollars. Mm. And any cubic is uh, is like you know it's a good company a yeah. brand like they they're usually known for resin printers, but they made a good FDM printer. I'll tell you that that bed leveling is probably the hardest thing to get right when you're first starting off. I think that's where I contacted you and I had was having print fail after print fail. You know, I was doing the pencil clips. That's how I kind of started. Well, actually, I started trying to do... Um, I, I got the 3D printer so I could print dust boots for the CNC. But then I started doing the, mm. the, um, the pencil clips and I was just having job fail after job fail. And it really came down to the bed leveling. So you're saying that a there is a 3D printer entry level two hundred dollars that has that built into it, which is which is pretty yeah. good. Yeah, I mean the thing is, most I, I, we will start to see more and more printers that have that as standard. Mm -hmm. um, it, about three years ago, that was like on the premium machines. And kind of like, you know, like cars, like luxury cars will, you know, come out with new tech and then eventually I'll trickle down to like the more right. like entry level cars. Same thing with the 3D printers is that that tech now, like every printer should have it. it you well, know? Just like that, like I jumped on the Kickstarter and I think we kind of talked about that a minute ago on the CR6 SE when it was like not even out yet. Yeah. It had the auto bed leveling at that lower ish. I mean, I still think I had like. 350 ish mm -hmm. you know from the kickstarter thing but it uh i mean it had the auto leveling but i'll tell you and i'm not taking away against auto bed leveling i've had better prints on the v2 over the cr6 actually manually leveling it and know that it's yeah. perfect perfect ish you know as good as yeah. i can get it yep. yeah i mean it depends on you know, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not taking away yeah. against the technology. I'm yeah. just yeah. speaking that you can still buy a cheaper printer without it. Yeah. Now, two hundred dollars for the one right. you just listed is is pretty good. I, I'm thinking about the listener who says I've never thought even thought about 3D printing. You know, 3D printing is never. I don't. I don't think I would ever use a 3D printer. So in the makerspace let's say you were trying to pitch somebody if you're a salesman and you're like it slices it dices it does all this great stuff yeah. so uh do your do your pitch on you know yeah. why you think for the maker a 3d printer is a valuable tool so i i think a lot of tools in in uh as a maker is you don't realize how awesome it is until you have it mm. Right. Or you see it in action or somebody shows you how you could utilize it. Right. And a 3D printer is basically it's a tool that is only limited by your imagination of what you can make on it. Yeah. And for woodworking, if you're a woodworking maker, uh, any kind of hose um, attachment, reducer, oh, yeah. expander, blast gate, I mean, just that in a, alone will pay off the printer if you have right. a shop that you're trying to build out the um, your dust collection system on. I mean, there's so many woodworking jigs uh, and things like even, you know, I've shared so many on my account um, of just like offset guides, measurement right. tools, um, jigs to hold your tools on the wall, uh, things that, you know, like things that you don't even have to design. It's already out there for free. So you just right. download it and print it, save you some time, save you some money. Um, it's, it, you know, just that is, 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 is good to have a printer. Yeah, absolutely. So like even the, the dust boot, which is the whole reason why I got the, the 3d printer in the first place. So Jeremy, um, and I'll, I'll share his, his link here, but he was the person who, who printed my first dust boot and he's in Houston. And I asked him to print a few more. And he said, dude, just buy the printer and um, yeah. it will pay for itself because, yeah, I yeah. paid, I think, maybe 250 bucks. But if you go to Rockler, mm -hmm. let's say, and you buy a fitting for a four inch port and that's like 18 bucks or 20 bucks. So you print a few of those you, and you do little jigs for like Trey, you well, both of you actually have got into the surf prep um you know holder kind of thing just yeah. little things like that just the shop jigs alone mm -hmm. 
the money that you would spend going to the actual store and spending 40 or 50 bucks on something. I mean, you do four or five shop yeah. jigs and it pays for itself. Yeah. So, um, I, I've helped a lot of like maker friends where they're like, Hey, can you print something for me? And usually I'm like, you guys should just get your own printer. Like I'll show you how to set it up and stuff like that. But like, if they're like, can you just print it for me? And I'll print it and they'll get it. And they'll just be like, Oh my God, right. This is amazing. And I'm like, yeah. And then, and then oftentimes they're like, I'm getting a printer, you know, like they, they sometimes have to see it, yeah. you know, like the part, um, to understand it or like, like tell them like, Hey, it's going to cost me this much to make it for you in material cost and like my time and like that you're already like you know like halfway there to buying your own printer right like like just just you know I th- just get it i think people uh, don't understand do the amount of time to. that is invested in them so like you know mm-hmm. you're you you want to do a dust boot and you're like oh just print that for me well i asked jeremy how, how long does that take he's like yeah, it's going to be, and I forget the time now because it was, you know, a couple years ago, but he's like, oh, I think it's, you know, probably about a 12 or 14 hour print. And I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's where people that don't print don't quite understand it. You're thinking, ah, oh, you know, it just doesn't. No, when you're talking 12 to 18 hours. Right. Like, yeah. That's a, that's yeah. a substantial difference <laughs> right yeah there's there's actually some updates uh on all of that that we could get into but like as technology is getting better as slicing software is getting better this is a software that basically takes your model and, and basically it's like a print u- printer utility that tells the printer what to do all of these things are getting so much better and printers are getting uh faster that prints are going to be quicker and that that's really the the future of 3d printing is right getting these prints down to a more reasonable time and uh there's a lot of ways uh, to do it right now and actually I've, I've consulted with a few people on how to do that mm. uh and that's why i'm also i'm always like helping friends who are 3d printing i'm like uh are you have you tried this or trying and doing that um but yeah it, it's it's you know like a lot of people think that um you know, something you just hit print and it just, you get it. Right. And they don't think, they don't even think about it being able to fail either. Right. So if you're like doing a 12 hour print, like Trey has done and something fails and you're like, you know what? Sometimes you can't recover it and you got to start over again at 12 hours. So tell us about it's, your, it's, it's ta- your console table that you built and how many hours was invested in that. Uh, it's like a cylindrical piece that failed oh, yeah, yeah yeah it was a side table yeah yeah that was a 60 hour print <laughs> and it failed twice <laughs> it, fa- it failed twice at the 50th hour <laughs> so that's a yeah, hundred hours of printing and uh, but that but the second time I, I ended up salvaging it because i was just like i'm not gonna do it a third time i've yeah. already wasted like at least uh it was like at least two rolls of filament so it's like 40 dollars yeah for each one so it was like 80 dollars. you ended up gluing them together um, right like, like you just printed the i ended up gluing yeah. it up second one yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the way the way it, the way it failed uh it was rough at the top i ended up just like really sanding it smooth yeah and because it had infill pattern it wasn't solid so i had to like fill it up with like a wood putty mm. to create a solid surface so i could actually glue on another piece on top and honestly you can't even tell unless you knew it. yeah at that point i'm yeah. like okay let's just paper mache this thing <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the first time people were like, try to, you know, you could, you could fix this. But like my ego was like, I want it to be perfect. Right. You know, like I'm going to do it again. Yeah. And then the second time was like, no, ego is broken. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> just going to salvage this. Happen. Yeah. You set up. Now the one table you printed all the parts for the console table. And you yes. just took it apart and put the mm-hmm. uh, that storage. So that was pretty cool. Talk yeah. about how you designed the pieces for it. So that design wasn't mine. Uh, so that one was actually a sponsor. Oh. Uh, it was a sponsored. I was working with Colts 3D, and there was a um, a model on there that was actually someone had designed it, but the they designed it after a real product that you could buy. But the real product is called I think it's like Playcraft or something. But the the it's basically um, these ninety degree clamp joints that you can buy like a set of 10 and you basically put flat pieces of wood together at like different angles and and basically create a mechanical joint by by these clamps that hold these corners together Mm. right and and then from there you basically lego this video console that i did or you could lego out a a dresser or whatever you know you're not you're not limited to 
to anything. It's just just the angles, and the, and the company sells this for a lot of money. And 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 I was thinking at one point like I could three D model this, and then and then I went on Colts three D, and someone had already done it, mm. and and so I printed like. I think like 50, 60 pairs of these. And I created this little video console. There's a YouTube video on my, uh, on my channel where you can see me explaining it and putting it all together. But that was like two months of printing. Oh, wow. Uh, of like all these little pieces. But at the, at the time, I think I only had one or two printers going at it. But it, was, it took a long time because they were also um, mechanical and I wanted to make sure it was super strong. So it had like a really high infill. So it took a really long time, but the parts were probably overkill. Right. But, but see, that's the kind of stuff that I think 3D printing really is neat because it's mm -hmm. functional furniture. And I, I, yeah. I've spoken about that a lot on my own channel is I love building functional items, yeah. not just a, a decorative sign that you can stick on the wall, but more right. of something you p can play like a Pac-Man yeah. or, or a variation or kids furniture, a step stool. Like, but that is something that if somebody did want to get into for granted, it's not cheap up front, but then you could save yourself by printing these pieces and buying some wood. Then, you know, going out buying a $500 dresser or so on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's where my passion is, is that I, I, I think some people think of when they think 3d printing, they're thinking D and D figures or they're thinking about, right. um, like uh, like novelty stuff that you print and it looks good on your shelf or you you know it's just like waste of plastic right. but it's it doesn't have to be you know it could be really functional really useful stuff that you could have in all aspects of you know your life that you could use you could like you know repair something on your car or uh, fix your dishwasher or make assortment trays you know yeah. things that would be useful to you uh, and 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 you know the the plastic that you can have. Some people think, um, well, plastic is wasteful or, or, you know, but you could buy plastic that's been recycled, right. you know, filament that's been uh, recycled plastic that, you know, you can reuse and create into something. You know, nice. So tell me it, th there is this video and there might be a couple of videos. This guy takes this bottle and he's got a cutter and he's cutting this bottle, yeah. like a plastic bottle and using it as filament. Is that real? It is real, yeah, and that that guy's insane uh, because it's it, <laughs> the amount of like like jerry rigging he's right. done to make it happen. Because the, the 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 only way he could really do it because it's um the type of plastic is PET, okay, like the that we have in the bottles, and PET is a plastic that is really good at being able to melt back down into something else a few times before it, it really degrades, and this guy. Like I, I, I was really interested. And I was like, I like looked into it, and I saw all the amount of work he put into it. I'm just like, no, I'm not yeah. doing that because, because yeah, because the plastic is like different thicknesses, okay. and yeah. he uses, um, he has to basically figure out. He has made a diagram of the thickness of each plastic, yeah. how thick to cut it, and how long to melt through the hot end to create the filament he uses and then to put it through his printer. And then the printer has all these settings to figure out how to print it right. as amazingly well as this guy does, because that does, does not print that nice. If I, I mean, a, there's no way a roll of filament is like 20 bucks, you know, like how, I mean, yeah, I get trying to now the reason why we are talking about him is because he's doing some stuff that's viral. Right. So there there's that yeah, yeah. there's, it's like, I'm not doing this to save money. I'm doing this to just, just to sh like showboat, <laughs> yeah, the, you know. Well, but, but I hope he does inspire other people to do yeah. it, right? Like I, I know, like he's not the first to do it. I've seen other people do it, and but other people have done it in a different way. Yeah. Where uh, usually they actually take the plastic and grind it up into tiny pieces, and then they put it through like a hopper, and mm -hmm. the hopper goes through the machine, and then that melts it in a uniform way to to pull out and those hoppers are usually pretty expensive so right. he's basically bypassed that entire thing and created a really small compact way of doing it which is brilliant uh and i think doing that i mean i hope he inspires other people to like create a commercial version of that right so when we were initially talking about 3d printing and i was doing the pencil clips you know for for the hat for the pencils um you, I think you had recommended going to PETG because it is a little bit, it will bend a little bit more, right? For clipping yeah. the pencils it's, in and out. It'll flex. Yeah. It'll, it, it, like just in case uh, you had pencils of different diameters, you could kind of like squeeze it in there uh, depending on your infill and stuff. Yeah. 
but but in the retrospect it's like now that i think about it it's like the the wood would probably like get marred before before the the plastic would yeah yeah or would actually fit in there so like you were saying though the pla and the the pet g i call it uh, we all have our own terms (laughs) for it that actually was a huge uh concern when we were doing the uh dust boots for brent's Mm. sleds and the reason i stuck with pla is because if something was to happen i wanted it to not hold on but to actually be able to shatter you know break apart or Mm -hmm. or something happened especially if the way we configured it it was so tight knit that if something got into the brushes or not it would just snap it away like Mm -hmm. i didn't want anything to bound itself and then start you know, yeah. helicoptering or something else. So yeah. that was sort of a uh, how we thought process as well. I think in that particular case, PTG would still break. I mean, the metal is really like power, like the blade is really strong mm-hmm. and sharp that it would just it would cut it, right? I don't think it would like nylon or something is even more flexible where it might actually kind of like bend and maybe just like melt a little bit, but still be f- like together. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. but I think, I mean, yeah, PTG probably would have been okay in that case, but I mean, like I said, like recently there's been a lot of debate in PLA, people have been doing tests with PLA versus PTG. And in some cases the PLA has been stronger and, and, but that's also like, we're talking now recently, like PLA has changed a lot in the last couple of years from where it was originally debated, uh, like three years ago. So one thing um, that I I definitely want to talk about is this 3D print of Jimmy DeResta that you did for Maker Camp. Um, I think a lot of people picked up, you know, and and learned about you and your account, Dave, through that whole process. But it didn't just start with, you know, you had to do a scan. So John Grubb asked in the pre-show, how do you like the handheld scanner? So... If you can just yeah. talk talk through the the scanner part and how that has amplified what you're doing, and then lead into the the Duresta print. Okay, so uh, so about a year uh, over a year now, I had uh work started. I I, I I dropped into comments of Shining 3D is a company based out of China that makes these 3D scanners, yeah. and I I I, I sent them a stupid message uh, on someone's like. Uh, post like hey at shining 3d sponsor me and <laughs> i didn't think anything of it and then the next day i got a message from them and they were like yeah we will we could nice. like write us a proposal and let's see if we could do something and i'm like so that oh, does okay. work <laughs> and my account wasn't that big then yeah yeah and i was yeah yeah so i figured i was like okay how do i write a proposal look that up and then i sent <laughs> i sent them like a couple ideas and one of those ideas was the uh, maker scan project where yeah um, I wanted to scan makers and basically create these 3D portraits of people uh, and, and upload it online for free for people to take and 3D print their favorite maker yeah. or, you know, modify the parts to do whatever you want. And I, I've been kind of taking the parts of Jimmy and modifying and doing some silly things. And, and, <laughs> and most recently, I'm doing something with – I'm collabing with Jimmy on something. Uh, well, I'm not going to uh, – just uh, – just kind of putting a hint out there right now. Yeah. We're going to, yeah. he's, he's playing with the idea. So I'm actually working on something with him right, right, right now. But, but, uh, I had asked, I, I forgot, uh, I think it was on Tiffany's podcast, um, Night Carver Design. And I, I, I told her that one of, I, I would love to get Jimmy, uh, to scan Jimmy and then do a full size 3D print of right. him and have it at the next Maker Camp. Yeah. And this was like eight months before. Were you Maker kind Camp. of joking, or was you, were you serious? Like, were you kind of like, eh? I was serious. Yeah. I, I, like, I was like, I want yeah. to, right? Like, I announced it, but I didn't know if Jimmy would say yes. Right. And I, I was like, you know, that that'd be a perfect person because it's Maker Camp. Yeah. It's really Jimmy Duress's, you yeah. know, how you help help create it, and it'd be a great way to get people involved in the community to to learn about the project and also to help with this idea. Um, so I, I I reached out to him. He's like, absolutely. Jimmy's amazing. He's super yeah. nice. And uh, and he, he was like, uh, what, what, okay, crazy side story. So I was supposed to go up to his farm to scan him. And it was Mother's Day weekend. He's like, oh, I got to go see my mom. Yeah. And, uh, and 
And uh, I'm like, I'm going to go down to Long Island. Where where do you live? And I'm like, oh, I live in Oceanside. And he's like, oh, that's where uh, my dad lives in Oceanside. Nice. Like, I'm going to come like you were going to. <laughs> I'm just going to come to your right. house. So Jimmy came to my house and I was scanning him in my garage and, he, and my family met him and everything. It was just like yeah. it was like the godfather in my in my did, workshop. Did it was your like family crazy. know who he was? Awesome. Like, had they had they? Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, this was this was. Yeah, this was after making fun. Maker, making, uh, yeah, making yeah. fun. So my son uh, was like six, and he was just starstruck. Oh, yeah. I've never seen him starstruck over anyway. He came in, he's like, "Hi, Jimmy," right. and then he was nice to him. And Miles was like, "Okay, he's a nice guy. Yeah. Like he's not this grumpy like he old plays man." On, on TV, yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, no, he, it was it was really special, um, and he was really nice. So I scanned him, and back to the project. Uh, after I scanned him, I I cut up the the scan into fifty seven pieces. And asked uh, makers in the community if they wanted to help 3D print a part, yeah. decorate it however they like, send it back to me, and then at Maker Camp we put it all together. Yeah. So and that was like eight eight months. If, so yeah. let's just be uh-huh. honest. Whose whose print was the best? And you can say mine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I think I think the winner goes to Dre. I think Dre put in the most yeah. work. Crafted by Dre. Did you, did you did you follow her and see what she did? I, I don't remember which one hers was. Hers was was so it the gold she, so, one? So, uh, no, hers was the resin one. Oh, okay. So 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 I I printed the part. I gave it to Dre. Yeah. Dre made a mold of it, and then she took a mini Jimmy yeah. and put uh, along with a bandsaw at anvil and basically yeah. put it in clear resin right. and then filled yes. it. And she was she worked so hard on yeah. it. Because it was uh, it was literally the day before uh, Maker Camp, she was still working. Oh, on it. wow! Like at Maker Camp on Friday, she was making it. And, and we put it in. Okay, on Friday, so yes, Saturday. I do remember that yeah. piece because at Maker Camp, she was she was taking it apart. On yeah, the yeah, yeah. She, yeah, she, she I, was she was still like on your story or yeah, something. yeah. She was still grinding it, smoothing it, flood coating it, wow. and and like. All that stuff like takes time yeah. to dry, and she was like yeah. speeding up the like curing process. It was like really down to the wire, and and she was just like, if it doesn't work, we can put it in the three D printed part. But I'm like, I want this in yeah. there. Like it should. Like I had originally planned on putting it together on Friday, but we like waited till Saturday to put it together just because I wanted it. Like we we all wanted it in right. there. So she 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 put a ton of yeah. I think when it. you sent me the file, it, it was like Jimmy's torso, and I was like, okay, thank God, you know, it's like not his butt or something yeah. like that, you know, like where I've got I've got to print Jimmy's butt. So were, was anybody butt hurt over having to print Jimmy's butt? <laughs> no, 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 no. There was a, a, an extremely high volume of requests for Jimmy's crotch. <laughs> like it, it was weird. It was like who got it. And, and it was actually split down the middle, so it was technically two pieces of crotch. Right. But it was just like, like, hey, like I had given to it Jimmy away for early. Two two different prints on that. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I love uh, his clown shoes too. His shoes came out uh, very colorful. And that was not planned. Oh, like there was two makers, uh, Dave Things from Taiwan, yeah. and the other one was Dad Crafted Grant. Yeah. And they did not. I, I did not think they they contacted each other because they didn't know what parts right. they had. But they both like went with a really colorful striped like design that almost looked like it was done on purpose, right. but it wasn't. Yeah, it, it was pretty pretty wild. It's amazing. I, I listened to that the their podcast to Jimmy's podcast, and they did talk about you know maybe it will go to like different locations or something like that. So I think they're thinking about putting it at. You know, different okay. different locations and stuff. So it's kind of cool to think that 57 makers, yeah. well, maybe not 57. How many did you print yourself? So, so there was, uh, there was, so there were actually at one point 57 makers, yeah. but in the end it was, uh, 50 makers 50. because some, some couldn't do right. it. Some had issues. Um, mine almost didn't make it. It, it, it was interesting. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yours got lost in the mail, yeah. right? But then it came. Um, there were, but actually, there was one or two parts that actually got lost, Ooh. and someone had to remake it. Um, but there was, but it, but it, what's interesting for me was, I, I had I had put this out eight months before yeah. it, and it's interesting to see like how many, how much, how many of us are procrastinators. Oh, yeah. No, the videos because were hilarious. It was like the deadline was coming. The video, the collaboration <laughs> videos that you were doing, like, hey, uh, I just checked yeah. out your part. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, it's it's in the mail or, or whatever. And they're like, oh crap. Now I got to start <laughs> yeah. printing this thing. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So I did I did those videos as like a reminder to people right. like, hey, get these, you know, like uh, like it's you got one month deadline right. and I don't even have half of them right. yet. And then uh the and that weekend of putting it together, I actually didn't have uh four of the pieces. Oh man. Or, th- or three no three of the pieces. Yeah. So it was like it was nerve wracking because if it, just if you if you're missing one piece, it couldn't be put right. together. But I, I totally underestimated how long it would take to actually put everything together. Right. I was like thinking, Oh, we'll do it at Maker Camp, it'll take an hour. Yeah. But we were sitting there for like four and a half hours like assembling. I don't believe it. The video was only thirty and... seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm not buying it. <laughs> So how long does it take to scan a person? So okay, so ba- so uh, I didn't really talk about the new scanner. Yeah. So the um, the old scanner I had was the Pro HD, which is like an eight nine thousand dollars scanner from Shining Three D that they loaned to me, um, and that's what I used to scan Jimmy. Okay. And it, and it actually took me, um, I think ten to fifteen minutes to scan Jimmy in like three different scans because of issues we right. had, and I stitched it together. This new scanner, which is $1,000, cuts that time down to scanning people because it does it really yeah. well. Scans people in like two minutes or wow. less. Yeah. and So so you're saying a $10,000, let's back up here. A $10,000 yeah. scanner took 15 minutes and yeah. $1,000 takes two. Yeah. Just because it's different technologies. Okay. And the $10,000 one is a really good scanner, but it but it has it's not meant... To scan people very easily, uh, products, and, but or it, but it scans, yeah, and it scans like products and like little details amazingly well. It captures that detail. Uh, whereas a new scanner, it, the way it, it scans, it has three different cameras, and it and it and it scans dark clothing and hair and people really quickly. Mm. And I could also scan people in like daylight and stuff, like various lights, and it's okay. So it's amazing. It's an amazing scanner. And uh, this is the scanner that I had wished existed at like, this quality yeah. level, like this entry uh, price point, like three years ago when I was like looking at 3D scanners because there was nothing. Everything was like like, like $400 in garbage mm. or like $5,000 in right. over. So it's like if you want to just play around with it, it's like it's not really worth it on either right. end. And this sits like right at a great price point. And I highly recommend it. I mean, like, like, like when we were talking about earlier on, like, oh, what can I use a three D printer right. for in my workflow? It's like people are asking, what do I use a three D scanner for in my workflow? You could use it for a lot of things, and I've been sharing that over the last year with like some of my content yeah. and creating stuff. Um, it, it's got a lot of uses in the woodworking community. Um, well, even just being able yeah, to it's, it's, it's like tool. scan something that you're wanting to make an adapter for. Or something like that. You can scan the yeah. part. You yeah. can you can put it into the program, and you can scale it to how you want to scale it. And then, do you take that right. scan Basically, and export it into the, like um, what's the what's your preferred program for manipulating files? It, it depends. So, like, you could do you could bring that into Fusion. Okay. You can bring it into uh, – I use Mesh Mixer. You could use it into Blender. You could even – if your scan is that good, you could go straight into a print. You could export it as STL. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and like people like, okay. So examples I give of people, how they could use the 3d scanner and woodworking, mm-hmm. uh, like, let's say you're a furniture restorer, right. And you're in your, there's a really nice antique, uh, molding or like a part of a, a cabinet that's been like totally gnawed by a dog right. or something, but the other leg is good. You could 3d scan that other leg and then have it basically carved out on a CNC right. And then replace the leg yeah. or molding or like a like a decorative um, thing on the house. I forgot what they're called. Like, you know, those carved. Um, yeah. Corbels and things. stuff. Yeah. 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 So it's not just for um, so, 3D printing that the 3D scanner it can be incorporated no. into various mediums. Yeah. And he, yeah, like especially CNC woodworking yeah. work. Um, I mean, look at Birch Toll Design Builds. Uh, Got got one of the same scanners. The, actually, we didn't even say the scanner's name. The scanner is the Ein Star from Shining 3D. Uh, so I, I I convinced him to get it, and he's been playing around with it. And uh, he makes amazing CNC carved stuff. Uh, I'm not going to spoil yeah. it with uh, what he makes. I think you'll go find out. You'll 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 thoroughly enjoy the stuff he makes. Uh, you can say the name, and I'll just say one of these. So I don't... <laughs> He makes. <laughs> I'm yeah. dangerous with this thing. I don't uh, can... 
all that kind of stuff I want, you know. So one thing I think we kind of need to blanketly talk about is the workflow of a 3D printing and how that right. flows. Mm -hmm. um, because I get questions a lot on the CNC style of stuff from designing to G code to sending to, you know, processing. So yeah. let's walk backwards a little bit. I know we, we kind of jumped into some advanced stuff, but let's walk back to the very beginning of when you make a design, Yeah. then you, you know, you're going to cut it, uh, slice it. Um, yeah. Kind of talk about the flow. Uh, on I mean, it's, it's very similar to uh, CNC carving. You literally use G codes mm -hmm. too, but it's it's kind of a little different. Instead of talking about speeds, you're talking about uh, temperatures, and and but the movement and stuff of the gantries is all very similar. Um, but like the workflow of 3D printing is, you know, it's the same way. Like you carve, you you want to think about what whatever you're 3D printing if it's um, in the right orientation to be 3D printed. If it's if you can 3D print it. Um, because there are certain t designs that are work better with 3d right. printing, right? It's like, if you were carving something out yes. of a, a block of aluminum, there's, there's certain things that will carve better than others, you know, especially if it has lots of like nooks and crannies and it's like a lot of bridging or things underneath yeah. something you, you want to, um, basically know if the design is is printable and, and most often cases like you know if, if it's pretty simple if it's very geometric it, it it's yeah. fine right uh so like those are my, my first step is always uh if i'm designing something i'm thinking about how it can print like mm. how easily it can print does it need supports is there bridging are the or if i'm making holes for things are the holes the correct size if if there's screws that are going in does it have to be offset mm -hmm. so like these are things that i think about in design right but if 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 i was something if i was printing something someone already made like and designed like off i downloaded off of thingiverse or printables.com those are two websites that i think are great resources to get free models uh there are some paid sites but like if you don't have a 3D printer and you're wondering if I should get one, just go on one of, the, one of those two sites and just start right. looking around, poking around, and be like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. Like I could, I could just download that and print it. Yeah. So like, or or just put in like a tool name, like Festool or Dewalt yeah. or Ryobi, and you just see the crazy amount of pages of things that people make yeah. have designed already for you for free to download to print. So the workflow is. Like if I was gonna go there, I would just download yeah. it. You get an STL file. The STL file you throw into a slicer, which is the printer utility. There are a couple of free ones out there. There's Cura. My favorite one is Prusa Slicer. Okay. Uh, and then there's um, some. Your, if your printers, whatever you buy, they usually come with their own mm -hmm. too. Or they'll just say go use Cura. Yeah. And then uh, and then you you bring it in, and then basically you tell your printer what material you're using. Um, like how, how strong you want it to be. And, uh, you know, you could, you could change the size of it if you want. And then you basically save it to your memory card as a G code. You put it into your printer and then, and then you basically make sure your filament's loaded and you hit print. Yeah. Right. It's that, that, that it's that, that easy kind of folks. <laughs> it's, uh, it's yeah. It's just really that easy. <laughs> it's just go out and do it. So when, yeah. when you're, and, it, it, and if not, <laughs> Dave's phone number will be at the bottom. You call him directly and tell him it's not that easy. I am happy to help anybody. Like yeah. DM me seriously. Like anybody, no, I know, I know. anybody who DMs me, I'm always like there to help. And even if it's like your first message, like "Hey Dave, I follow you. I listen to you. I got a 3D printer. I need help." I'm always like, I always reply yeah. back. Yeah, so. you've been awesome. Like just talking through, you know the issues that I had kind of early on. I haven't fired up the. In fact, I was very proud that that print for jimmy's build i did it in one shot i didn't have any errors and it was yeah. so when it when it got lost in the mail i was like oh now i'm gonna have all the issues right like <laughs> but yeah. yeah i i i struggled um, early on and you were very helpful you know through the whole process and um that it's it was interesting to see um like who had their printers dialed yeah. in because there were so many people who were like, oh, mine, mine had warping oh. or mine failed. Um, it, it was yeah. So if you got yours in one shot, it, it's pretty yeah. good. Uh, just um, Rustic Joy. Do you guys know him? I don't think so. Uh, he his he had one of the hardest times. I think I, I want to say his print failed like 
20 times. Oh. 20. And Holy he kept, smokes. and he kept going. And he was like, he was like, I don't know if I'm going to finish in time. Right. And, and I was the whole time I was just like, listen, I want to, I want you to get, I know you're frustrated and you probably want to stop right. now, but like, I want to get you, I want to get this print printer fixed. Most yeah. importantly, and then get the print. Like I, I want to, you know, like I want to get the print, but I want you to make sure like your printer works. Right. So yeah. it, was, it was just basically, and, and all of that was a first layer oh, issue. Wow. And that, and now he's like, he got that fixed, and he's just like printing like crazy. I just followed him back, but like so it could have you. been that he got frustrated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that. That I think is the biggest thing. You know, people get a printer, and they think you know they see people like you who you know you just print it well actually you show your fails which is very much appreciated um but some people get a printer they yeah, see people who print things on a daily basis and they think hey i'm just gonna hit print right like it's that easy folks it slices yeah. it dices yeah. <laughs> and, and it's really it's a learning curve but just you know youtube what- and, and these files that you that you download a lot of them have like okay down to the this is the layer height that you need to use this is the infill that i recommend yeah. and all that yeah yeah people but what people don't what people don't understand is it may not even be the machine right. like you could have a a breeze coming through and totally wreck the entire <laughs> yeah. print like yeah. a breeze or, or a registry or you yeah. change the temperature in a house from hot to or heat yeah. to ac like things like that can totally just wreck mm-hmm. a print yeah so without so, having any problems with the machine go ahead so the first time like you know like i learned all of this on my own the first like three yeah. four years like i would go on reddit i would ask for help or i would just sit there with my printer broken for like two <laughs> months trying to tinker with it and that's why like you know when people ask me i'm there to help because i wish i had that kind of yeah. support and but the thing is the funny thing that you mentioned with the breezes is like a lot of times people have issues with their printers when it's a change in the right. season and they don't realize it. And I'm just like, well, it's mm-hmm. fall. Like the it, the temperature in your house is completely yeah. different. The humidity is different. That's why you're probably getting some like, like, um, like your filament gets stuck right. because it's, it's mm-hmm. too cold or something like that. And you need to warm it up a little bit. It's just like weird little things like that. And 3d printing is not, you know, just click and print. Like I described yeah. earlier, there's a lot of tinkering. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but the thing is there are like bigger printers, uh, like, like more expensive printers that are reliable like that, that kind of monitor to that little point, And it makes the printing easier. It, it just, it, unfortunately, most of us buy the cheaper printer because they're afraid to get into it. And that comes with a little more headaches than the more expensive yeah. ones. It yeah. does, but I don't want to deter people from starting cheap either because, yeah. like I said, the V2s work great. I mean, there's other cheaper ones coming out now. I think uh, Arctic or Art, uh, whatever that brand is. I mean, it's it's starting to make a big name for itself too. But I'll say the one thing, accessory for, for especially PLA, was a Sunlu dryer. Yeah. And it was like a $40 investment, and it has changed everything. So what is everything. that? I got three of them Explain now what that is. It, so a Sunlu dryer, what it does is it just heats the filament to a constant okay. temperature and it'll keep it consistent more, you know, obviously your bed and everything's still exposed, but your filament now is going to be heated to a constant temperature. So as he's saying, it's not cold trying mm. to get pushed through right? Uh, and, and it's not as a variable assist. So it's keeping it at a constant temperature from there all the okay. way to your nozzle but also and the, then to your print. The, the, the Sunlu is also a dryer. So filament, uh, PETG, is hydroscopic. So it will actually absorb the moisture in the air. And eventually that, that filament doesn't look like it, but it's like a sponge. It's got like this water in it. So when you actually print with it, you'll actually see steam come out uh, or, and that will actually like have pops and that pops will leave like a, kind of like an undesired texture oh, wow. or your prints might look not as smooth. So what happens is you need to put it in that dryer to actually heat it up so that the, the water basically comes okay. out. That's why when you buy a roll of film and it comes with a, um, a pack of, uh, what do they call it? This, 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 this yeah, the do it? not eat package. That's a kint. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I call it. It tastes yeah. so good though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Please don't eat it. Do, do not recommend so, it. So, yeah. <laughs> disclaimer. I'll put the disclaimer down at the bottom. But, uh, so yeah. most people, yeah. um, that I see, you know, they've got a display and all their filament is out. Is it okay to leave the filament out if it's inside your house, or should you put it back in that package? Trey, do you want to answer that? Or uh, yeah. 
PLA is one thing, uh, and that's mostly what I use in a lot of cases, and a lot what a lot of uh, mid level people yeah. will use. I, I don't see a problem with it as long as you can still heat it up in a dryer or something. Like that. I call it a dryer, and that's its correct term, but I don't use it as a dryer. I use it more or less to heat mm. the filament at a con- constant yeah. temperature. Um, and even at that, you still have to play with it to find the right temperature that you can use. Yeah. But deep dive into that a little bit more. What So, you know, yes. So, so I, I have a food dehydrator. Uh, like a, just a normal food dehydrator and it's a big box that I took the shelves out and I put my filament into because I print a lot with PETG and PETG, if you leave it, like I'm in a basement and my humidity level is probably around 50 or 60 and um, it, it leaving it out for like two weeks, it just becomes, you know, it's printable, but it's just like, it, it won't look nice. Yeah. The walls won't look smooth. They'll get like, you know, waviness or even like give you like a matte texture, which kind of looks weird. So I just throw all like my PETG into there that are out and I just heat it up for, you know, the recommended temperature and time to suck that water out. And then I just put it back right. on the shelves. You could do it over and over and over again. PLA, like you said, isn't as hydroscopic, but it does absorb water. But we're talking about like being out for like eight months, nine months yeah. of it. You know, like, like I've had issues with there that were, you know, like the print doesn't look that good. And I think, oh, it was my printer is an issue. But then like, well, I also had this filament out for like, a long time and I right. never used it. So I'll throw it into the dehydrator and then try to print again and it comes out fine. Okay. Like, you know, that's the thing is like some people might have these printer issues and they're like, I don't know what's wrong right. with my printer. And it's like, might not be a printer. So we're, we're winding down on, on time. Uh, what is the weirdest thing that you have printed? Uh, <laughs> wow. That's, that's coming out of left field. I'm not sure. I mean, <laughs> Uh, hot dog Dave is probably pretty weird. Um, that's one of my posts that I've made. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where I was, where I scanned myself, and then someone's like, "Can you three D print a hot dog?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I can three D print a hot dog." And then I was like, I, I was like, I, I, I made the model. I scanned a hot yeah. dog, and then I'm like, "Well, this is just a hot dog." So then I'm like, well, what if I was dressed up like a hot dog? And then that became a whole reel. And then, and then it was became a series where I printed him, but his shell was like kind of too thin and he cracked right. and broke. So then I had a funeral for him. <laughs> yeah. And then, it, and then, and then most, and that was like a, a year ago, right? Almost. And then I, uh, I, I brought it back for Halloween yeah. where I did the whole series. I reposted yeah. it again. And then, um, I, I, I did a, I re, I made a new print of zombie hot dog Dave. And, and then I went back to where I buried him and then I had him shoot out of the ground as like a zombie. Oh so that was yeah. like, that's one of my weirdest, uh, weirdest things I print. I, I mean, oh, man, I, I'm sure I printed weirder right. things, but I don't, I don't know. That's funny. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you guys so much for, uh, for being on the podcast. I, I'm sure we could probably like with every episode, I feel like we could talk for hours uh, just because it's it's stuff we love doing, um, but thank you for for being on the podcast. And we're gonna do a little bit of an after show for Patreon uh, members only. So in that, uh, I'm gonna play the game yes or no. Uh, I don't know if you've listened to the podcast before, uh, Trey. I know that we've played it before, and I actually have a little bit of a yes or no. There you go. Yeah. Ooh. So we go. we're gonna play. We're going to play yes or no, the game uh, in the after show. So if you want to listen to that, it's going to be fun. I've got a, a couple of different questions I'm going to throw out the guys and see see what fun transpires. So, Trey, tell uh, people where they can find you. I'm on Instagram at handcrafted by Trey and variable other ones, but you can find me All right. there. And Dave? I am 3D DIY Dave uh, on Instagram and TikTok and YouTube. Yeah. And actually, TikTok is where you where you kind of exploded. I think you you like how many or how many? Me? Oh, you didn't. No. Okay, I thought you had like yeah. No, 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 no. no. I'm super okay. low. I'm super low. I I I, I despise I, TikTok. I, I refused it forever and then <laughs> yeah. finally got it. So uh, I, it, 
for other reasons. I've said day, this but. in a couple other episodes, uh, but so, well, I'm Matt with Voltner Woodworking, and you can find me on all the socials at Voltner Woodworking. And I don't recommend that you follow me on TikTok because it's just reposts of my Instagram content. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, same here. So, uh, so take a moment, uh, listeners, take a moment and leave us a review wherever you're listening to this podcast at, um, and you can send future ideas for future episodes or uh, you know content ideas. You can DM me at uh, on Instagram at Maker Lounge Podcast as well as you can send an email to Maker Lounge Podcast at gmail.com. Catch the episodes early, get your chance to win free swag uh, by becoming a Patreon member, and that's patreon.com slash Maker Lounge Podcast. Um, and so next week, I'm going to have um, a, a special guest. It's Temecula. It's Tyler with Temecula Yard uh, Games, I think it is. And uh, so we're going to talk about, you know, f- kind of his business. He does a lot of like cornhole boards and things like that. So it'll be a, a, another great episode. Uh, just really trying to talk about all the different mediums. If anybody knows any underwater basket weavers, uh, send them my way because uh, I'm very intrigued in that. Uh, <laughs> but now I'm picturing this in my head, you know, underwater with the scuba suit. <laughs> so uh, thank you guys so much. We're going to head over to the after show. So if you want to get that content, uh, make sure that you subscribe on the Patreon website. So thank you guys. Appreciate it. We are heading into the after show. If you're not a patron, we'll see you next week for another great episode. But if you are, you will receive a link to listen to the after show. Thanks so much for listening and sharing the podcast with your friends.